Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video we are going to explore about semantic clustering. Okay, so it is kind of similar with semantic search what we have already discussed in our previous video. Just a quick recap that what is semantic search? It is nothing but instead of simply searching in our database using simple where clause, maybe using like operation or complex regular expression. Instead of doing via this technique, we try to find out the search results based on similarity in the meaning or similarity in the content, right? That is basically try to understand what user tried to search and based on that, it returns the search result. And as a result, overall search experience get improved because most of the time it gives us better result compared to simple like expression based search or complex regular expression based search, right? Same goes for semantic clustering. That is in this case, we group the data points based on their semantic meaning or content similarity. That is, if you consider in NLP world, suppose we are having some unstructured text data points for which we don't have the labels. That means it is nothing but a clustering technique. Now, if we want to group those unstructured text data points into certain number of clusters, then based on meaning or based on content similarity, if you want to do, that time we can opt for semantic clustering. Okay. And obviously, as done in semantic search, here also we are going to take help of vector embedding and cosine similarity in the backend. So intuitively, you can understand like this way, for any unstructured text data, we can convert that to a higher dimensional vector representation. And like that way, for all our training data points, we will be doing the embedding. And in that higher dimensional vector space, whatever vectors will be close to each other, using those, we can form a cluster. So this is the basic idea how semantic clustering actually works in the back. So obviously, we need a vector database which can provide maybe this kind of functionality to perform clustering based on our embedding vectors. And the good news is, FAISS provides this particular functionality. Okay. Using FAISS, not only you can do semantic search, but you can perform clustering, PCA, that is principal component analysis, that is converting the higher dimensional vector to a lower dimensional one if needed, and quantization. So in this video, we are going to focus on clustering. How to perform clustering using FAISS. So this is a sample code what they have provided. As a typical input parameters for any k-means clustering, we need to provide how many centroids we need. And this particular value can be derived in a better way using ILPO method and Tilahote's code, which I discussed already in our previous video. If you want to know that in detail, you can check the link given in the description box. How many iterations in k-min clustering I want to do? Okay, and Fargos is true. This is basically nothing but a property related to FAISS k-means method. And D is basically dimension. That is basically in our case, it is 384. If you are using sentence transformer, all meaning LML6 V2. And if you are using some other language model for embedding, then in what dimension it is basically creating the embedding vector that should be provided in the D variable. Okay. And then we need to just call FAISS.K means we need to pass the dimension, number of centroids needed, number of iteration needed, and Fargo's. Once we pass this property, we can call dot train to train on our training data set. Okay, right? And in this way, we can simply implement k-means clustering using FAISS. So without any further delay, let us quickly jump into the implementation section. As a first step, what I'll be doing, I'll be installing some necessary modules like pandas because my input data can be a pandas data frame. Then sentence transformer I am using. This will be helping us in getting the embedding vectors. Pandas I am using to parallelly convert our input unstructured text to embedding vector and FAIS is obviously needed for k-means cluster. Okay, right? So here all these things are getting installed and here we are importing all the necessary modules. Now let's see our data. So basically our data is having some unstructured text in the first item in the list and the second element is basically the sentiment associated with it. Like I love the ambience of the place. Obviously it is a positive sentiment. Similarly, the service was credible and slow. This is a negative experience, right? So like that way, we are creating our level data, okay? But point to be noted, we are going to perform clustering. That is k-means clustering, right? So in case of clustering, we don't have levels. But here I have given the levels just to show you how efficiently k-means clustering is working and how all the positive things it will be grouping in one place, how all the negative comments it will be putting in another cluster, right? To show you that, here I have created a label data, but our actual data will be sitting in DF using which we will be training our k-means clustering model. And here if you see, in our this data, we are having only raw text, we don't have the labels associated with it, right? So here what we are doing, 
we are going to create our this data frame and here I can execute df to view our actual trading data. Now as part of the next step what we can do, we can perform embedding and to do embedding already in our previous video whatever technique we followed that same one we are going to implement here. So I'll just copy and paste the code from our earlier github code. So first we are creating the sentence transformer object for all many lm l6 v2 which convert any input text to a 384 dimensional vector space. So here I can run this one and here if you see this is our input data frame and here all the necessary things it has downloaded so that is done I can go to the next and here what we have done next we have created a simple function to get the embedding vector for any input parameter and then here we are basically initializing pandaral so that I will be doing and then as part of the next step here I am going to get the embedding vectors for our input text. So df data frame I am using and here if you see this is our df data frame which have only text data okay it don't have any label so we can perform clustering on it first we will be doing the text embedding for that and parallelly using pandaral it will do for all the rows and now if I do df here along with our text data you will be seeing the embedding vectors right perfect okay now next what we have done we have basically done semantic search in our earlier video but this time the code will change and we will be doing key means clustering. So here I will be copying this piece of code and paste here centroids. So I can keep two centroids as of now because we know actually in our training data set we are having only two classes right. But in our real projects ideally this particular count of centroids that is key value in key means clustering should be decided based on Silohoke score and elbow method right. And as part of the next line here you can see Google Colab itself is giving the suggestion so I will be keeping that as well. So whatever input we are passing in the k-means object whatever we have created here from FAS that expect a list of numpy array right. So that's what we are casting here that our embedding vector column we are converting to a numpy array list okay right and then here we are training our data instead of this D we can put 384 because our these embedding vectors are having dimension of 384. Suppose you are using some other embedding technique then in whatever dimension it is mapping our input data that dimension value you need to put here and I will simply run our job right. So here you can see our job is done that means model training is complete. So once training is done what we generally do in our k-means clustering basically we inspect that different rows are falling under which cluster right. So if you recall our machine learning course so this is kind of graph we ultimately created as part of k-means clustering right and here you can see first here total there are five clusters and each data points are mapped to one particular cluster and that way we have created the visualization. Now here we have trained our model but we don't know this particular text and this particular text both are falling under same cluster or different cluster right or which text is falling under which cluster. So grouping is already done in the backend but we need to know which text will be falling under cluster 0 and which text will be falling under cluster 1 that we still need to decode right and for that also a function is there if you go through the documentation here this is the code okay to compute the mapping from a set of vector x x basically the numpy array list which we have used for training our k-means clustering model right. Now each row in this vector list are falling under which cluster whether that is cluster 0 or cluster 1 that we need to understand right and for that we can use basically this kind of code. So here I will be pasting that and if I run and here if I do d comma i I will be explaining what is d and what is i. So here this kind of output we are getting. So what is this let me explain. So just a recall on the steps what we perform after training of k-means clustering model okay. So initially this kind of grouping will not be there all suppose having same color black color and we have total 5 centroids in this case suppose one centroid here another centroid here another centroid here another centroid here and another centroid here something okay right. Now for each data point what is the distance with respect to its nearest centroid. So let us consider this particular data point. For this data point the nearest centroid is this one and this is the distance right with respect to its nearest centroid. Then for this particular vector suppose this is the nearest centroid so here this is basically the distance that value we are basically getting here that is for each row in x any one particular row 
is closest to which cluster centroid and what is its distance okay so here if you see the first element showing one that means the first row in our numpy array list x it is closest to cluster 1 and the distance is 0 0.54 okay right it will not show the distance for the row 1 with cluster centroid 2 because that is far away so all we are considering with respect to nearest cluster centroid what is the distance and in which nearest cluster centroid it got mapped so first row is mapped to cluster 1, second row is mapped to cluster 0, third row is mapped to cluster 1, fourth row is mapped to cluster 0. And for the fourth row, when it is mapped to cluster 0, with respect to cluster 0 centroid, the distance you will be getting in the fourth element in this D matrix. Okay, like that way here it is giving us the output. And now let's see how efficient this clustering is. So here what I can do, I am already having my label data as well. That's why I have labeled this same data earlier to understand the correctness of our clustering. And now let's compare. So here this is the text actually on which we have applied clustering, right? And for that same text already I have categorized manually, right? So I love the ambience of this place. It is positive comment, right? That's why here it, the category is coming positive. Now in our k-means clustering what we can expect that all the positive comments should go to one cluster and all the negative comments should go to another cluster. K-means clustering will not tell me that category is positive or negative but at least it should group all the positive comments in a same cluster and all the negative comments in another cluster because here we are doing semantic clustering. So based on meaning ideally it should be clustering right. So let's see. So here let's first mark all those rows for which we are getting the cluster 1 as nearest cluster. So for the first row we are getting this. So this one and then third one we are getting this. So see both are positive. And then fifth one we are getting and here you can see again it is positive. So I hope you are finding a similarity that positive things are getting grouped in one cluster. Then first turn, third turn, fifth turn and then seventh. Okay seventh is one. And here if you see seventh here also it is positive right so all the positives are till now going to one cluster then eighth also is one so here it is kind of misclassified although it is negative but it has grouped with the positive comments and then ninth also it is one so here it is positive right so that means in our positive cluster this comment this comment this comment this comment this comment and this one this all went to positive cluster and in our negative cluster all other data point went so let's validate second data point so here you can see second one negative okay then here fourth one fourth one here if you inspect it is negative then here sixth one here if you see it is negative so kind of k-means clustering is also grouping the negative comments based on their actual content that is it has detected the pattern intelligently right and then post that only the last element is zero so here if you see last element is also falling under negative. So only one misclassification happened that is the packaging was damaged when it arrived that one although it is negative but it was grouped with positive comments. But over and all our k-means clustering has done a pretty good job to segregate the positive comments and negative comments into different clusters right. So I hope you got that particular essence. And this is how using simple FAISS module and vector embedding we can perform semantic clustering. And obviously here if you see I have not done any kind of text pre-processing like stop word removal, stemming, lemmatization, making all the words to lower case. Those kind of pre-processing I have not done here. If you perform those kind of operations before training our k-means clustering model obviously you might expect better accuracy in the result. Right. So I hope you understood this semantic clustering technique. This is all for my this video. The complete code and the reference links I will be providing in the description box. Please go through those. Try to do some hands on. That way you will be getting better idea out of it. And if you are enjoying our generative AI using AWS and modern snake stack playlist. Then don't forget to share with your friends and colleagues. And subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.